to see us perform live, use that big brand of yours and follow us on Twitch. We do things live there sometimes. Hey guys, uh, so I want to talk about uh, one of my favorite parts of uh, growing up with video games. That is the video game magazine. Um, uh, and it's kind of crazy that uh, <laughs> that um, uh, Brian and Brittany uh, brought this out. Game Players, this was actually my favorite oh, magazine growing up. Um, and so show the back of that one. Is oh, that the, the one with the shack one? on it? Oh no, no, no that one has, has shack. Is war. <laughs> no, this one does that have shack on it. That's uh, NBA Jam. Jam. Yeah. <laughs> so my favorite thing is uh, Jarris got these magazines for me and Brittany for Christmas uh, last year, I think. I believe uh, so. That was a couple years ago. And mine is got both Sonic the Hedgehog and Speed Racer on it, which are two of my favorite <laughs> things of all time. And of course, Brittany has one that is a DK64 uh, Donkey Ooh. Kong reference. Yeah. So Sorry, I just looked at the insert on this one, and this has... Wow, um, National Council. I super love all the advertisements. The drug it. warning. This is a digital pictures ad uh, <laughs> for Corpse Killer, Slam City with Scotty Pippen, and so, um, Here, I got some, you. Some, um, anyway, FMV video games for the Sega CD. Holy shit. <laughs> I'm like really geeking out right now. <laughs> That's like your favorite stuff. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, um, I should bring this to work and show yeah, uh, Josh. Yeah. He would lose so, his nuts. The only thing I can say, I never read uh, video game magazines when I was a kid. Um, didn't even know they existed. But we do have a bunch of these in the bathroom at work, and I read them when I poop. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've read The Legend of Zelda one quite yeah, a few times too, now. The like, Ocarina of Time yeah, yeah. one. So we have like a set of bathrooms that's supposed to be for everybody, but they always get clogged because the plumber who built the building was, I don't know, terrible. Uh, <laughs> so we have a second set of bathrooms bathrooms they're supposed to just be are the owners of the company's bathrooms <laughs> it's but the special poop town. i go and poop over there because they don't get clogged as easily <laughs> but that's, but our big boss has like a bunch of magazines in the bathroom so mm. i read them and poop I found, I found a I found review for, for shack foo the guy is 77 percent look show the picture of shack though like Look at this man. I have to zoom in on these. Yeah, uh, I've got so much editing to do. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. Sorry, this turned into Hutchins magazine. Zoom, zoom in on this <laughs> so yeah, go ahead. Um, I have a lot of experiences with uh, video game magazines. I have actually collected every U.S. official Dreamcast magazine and all the demo discs. I've kept them in pristine con uh, condition. Pristine. There's only like twelve. Uh, there's thirteen issues, so it wasn't. You weren't allowed to open them. <laughs> I did open them up. I rebought them again. No, no, no. I was going to say, he probably has double copies or something. Like, one for display, one for reading. Yeah, kind of yeah. like you and your Donkey Kongs. Holy shit. Strategy guy. There, there are ads in the back of this for used game uh, businesses. <laughs> Video Game Network. We pay more for your used games. Wow. Um, let's see. Prices. Gizmos, gadgets, and games. Gizmos got it all. That's a weird looking hedgehog. Yeah. Um, it's like a knockoff Sonic. He's, yeah, 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 he's got glasses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hate it. It looks like you guys remember that Burger King Big Kids meal or whatever, and it had like some fucking nerd kid with like skateboard yeah. pads on, and he had like the square the glasses or yeah. whatever. <laughs> it was like a the visor big, that goes across his face. That's what the hedgehog looks like. So the hedgehog looks like. I think his name was like Wheels or something, which is <laughs> fucking wild. That, that, that was because he was the in a wheelchair. Kid. Yep. Yeah. No, this kid wasn't in a wheelchair. There, there's several of them, but yeah, I think there the was. Talking about the there was one. a kid in a wheelchair, but he wasn't the leader. The leader was a blonde kid, of course. <laughs> they grew up to be the Backstreet Boys. So, yeah. what was? I mean, I know you didn't read many as a uh, growing up. Uh, I didn't but, read any. I didn't know they existed. But okay, well, I These guess these are literally for the, rest the first ones I've ever seen or looked at. <laughs> That, <laughs> that blows my mind a little bit too. Wow. Well, what was your favorite video game magazine, Hutch? This one. Game, no game players. Game players. Yeah. So of course, I, 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 mine's more like the regular, more like uh, common one that was around here was Electronic Gaming Monthly. I, I get, did get that a bit too. I yeah. got a lot of that one. EGM yeah. actually, EGM issue, uh, uh, um, November. Of 1997 mm. or 98, I'm not sure, it was really important to me because it was the Sonic Adventure one with the green background uh -huh. that introduced and announced Sonic Adventure to the world. <laughs> Oh. And that was when I got back into video games, because like I, I I I had a Sega Genesis still. I didn't even play um, 
like PlayStation beyond going to my friend's house and I've never even played an N64 at that time. Mm. I was just like, whatever, video games. I like girls now. <laughs> <laughs> because I was also a teenager. Yeah, yeah. priority shift. Um, but when I saw this cover, I was just like, oh shit, they're making a 3D Sonic. I need to get this. Whatever it's on, I need to get it. I I learned after that uh, that about the whole like Japanese uh, consoles come out before American ones. Mm. I pre-ordered a Japanese console accidentally, <laughs> um, but yeah. So I just got really excited about that one. I read it over and over and over again. Yeah. So so what? Um, I'll go back to game players here. So what they kind of did? So they kind of rebranded themselves a bit into uh, ultra game players. Okay. So that gave them an excuse to they leveled up. They leveled up. Yeah. They they started including a uh, a uh, CD ROM in it, Ooh. and um, so it would put in your computer, and uh, it would have a bunch of like movies for trailers, mm-hmm. and um, sometimes they have like some fun little skit staff videos and stuff. That's cool. But, uh, it was really neat. Um, and the it, beginning it, of fake YouTube videos for like reviewers reviewing games. Mm. Um, but yeah, like like all that stuff kind of like really like is you know it's a new like it's a new like media like mm-hmm. venture. So it was mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. like it really excited me. But also, this was how they distributed Christmas nights through one of the um, that's magazines. right. It might have been through game players. Uh, um, I I would feel like it's either was uh, game players, it's either whatever official Sega Saturn uh, magazine there was, or yeah. EGM. Yeah. So it's weird to me that I think the concept of a video game magazine, but also knowing what I know now, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But well, I mean, we could honestly, I think this is a whole separate topic that we could get into. But demo disc are what kept ma- uh, video yeah. game magazines yeah. alive mm-hmm. for a long time yeah. too. I, mean, I had sense. more jam packs for my PlayStation Two <clears throat> than I had actual games. Yeah, exactly. And just the ama- uh, like that was the reason why I got the official Dreamcast magazine because every issue came with it. Demo with disc. a demo disc mm-hmm. oh that's cool so uh there's 12 issues and 12 mm-hmm. demo discs so <laughs> and this also makes sense because like now we get all of our information uh online Brian's walking away again <laughs> okay, i'll be right back we get all of our information online yeah. but back in the day like we didn't have the internet well, so we'd have yeah. to get your news from the magazine yeah so. that's part of why I, I never really read video game magazines is like i didn't have a video game console that was mine until after we had internet. So like game informer was less of a thing that I went to than game facts. Yeah. Mm. Com, um, or one of those other like websites that did reviews and announcements and stuff like that. So I, I think, yeah, I, I think I missed the period in my time where I would have, been a game magazine person so here's actually a bunch of them just to like pass them around if you guys want to look at them but this is the Break demo disc for <laughs> several demo like disc for different issues of the official dreamcast magazine yeah. Oh, yeah. and it had so many cool things my favorite things that also came with cool updates like it came with the web browser 2.0 and 3.0 <laughs> i'm looking at that right now oh, oh yeah that's, that's how they distributed like uh, firmware updates. yeah yeah that's pretty cool and mm. they also would come with free whole games like sega swirl came with that demo disc mm. of the browser which was an online game you could play it was a simple puzzle game your favorite one? Oh, the shinmu one with jet set radio and echo the dolphin it's a that's pretty good one yeah. everything <laughs> it's a pretty good one ever made brian feel feelings I'll pass these around. yeah go ahead and take a look <laughs> but yeah the demo disc are definitely one of the reasons why video game magazines kept kept going yeah um but also so um if you so, some of the retail ones um uh, had some cool extras. So uh, EGM, I think, was uh, one I'm thinking of specifically. Um, when uh, Mario 64 came out, mm-hmm. um, they included in one of their issues a walkthrough to get 120 stars. That's right. And it was very well done. It was very yeah. detailed. I used that to get all Well, of them. before wow. Strategy Guides existed, that was how you got strategies, yeah. was through, like, Nintendo Power. Yeah. Um, Nintendo Power had, like, started off with a lot of strategy guides to the video games, and that's how you had, like, tips and tricks. And that's the Konami code even got, like, heavily, massively reported through... Mm-hmm. Uh, the Nintendo Power. Yeah. Back when game journalism had ethics. That's right. <laughs> you um, couldn't wait to say that. Yeah, it's true. Uh, yeah. I also just learned that there is a Dreamcast game called Kiss Psycho Circus colon The Nightmare Child. Do you want to oh. play it? I have it. I kind of do. Game. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's so is, not is good. That, is that the, um, it's the, the light gun thing? No, that's a Kiss game. It plays like a terrible, terrible Duke Nukem. 
Oh, okay. That's yeah, great. it's and you can choose between different band members from Kiss. Perfect. <laughs> so I, I have to. Oh, yeah, I want to yeah. be the kitty. So this actually did sell me a few games. Like I bought Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver because of that yeah. demo disc. And um, well, it was it was a was great way back in the day. I actually miss demo discs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because they're thanks like, Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. Yeah. Well, I like. <laughs> I remember playing uh, Zone of the Enders. Yeah. Because the demo disc for it, I think, came with the PlayStation mm-hmm. 2. It, no, it came. Zone of the Enders came. It came no, wait a minute. You might be right. Because the Metal Gear Solid 2 demo came, came with, with Zone, Zone of, the, of Enders. the Enders. Yeah. So I remember that, ch- like, some weird chain where mm-hmm. I played a demo of Zone of the Enders, was like, holy shit, this is really cool. Bought Zone of the Enders, mm-hmm. got the metal gear solid 2 trailer mm. or a uh, demo and was like oh okay let's just playstation forever now i mean there were some really fantastic ways to go about so I actually i had a conversation with one of our co-workers he just bought viva pinata uh on the xbox mm. 360 and it was like uh microsoft's first four way into like gaming for kids yeah and they had a lego star wars demo disc and a sonic the hedgehog 06 demo disc in it <laughs> and i was like hey have you opened it up yet and he was just like no so i was like well enjoy sonic the hedgehog 06 in there when you get there and he's just like what <laughs> follow me because he played uh he they came out later for a regular disc version of viva mm-hmm. pinata mm-hmm. this one was like some weird puffy plastic thing that held oh, the disc yeah. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't like standard DVD shaped at all. And they came out with it a standard more like one later. It was tape or something. <laughs> yeah, it was more like it was. <laughs> like those big classic plastic cases that your Disney yeah. movies came Yeah, in. <laughs> except way, way weaker. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was pretty it, terrible. It stands out on, on the video game shelf. Definitely. Yeah. But, um, it's like a weak shock box. <laughs> I wonder how many people in the world have only ever played Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 as the a demo, demo mm-hmm. and have never actually played the full game. I spent a summer doing that. I did too. Yeah. yeah. Well, then I bought the game, though, because it was just <laughs> really amazing game. But uh, I'll tell you what was really... Uh, we're kind of getting away from video game magazines and more demo disc. Uh, <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> um, I want to go back to one thing. So EGM was the magazine of choice for me. It was actually my friend had the subscription. I went over and would read the magazine after he got done reading it. Mm. Uh, Thanks, but, Joe. No, it was uh, different. Someone else. Uh, well, so, still thank you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Joe, for whatever you've done. <laughs> um, but there was... At the time, in the late 90s, video game magazines were so popular that there were second versions of video game magazines. I remember... Because EGM2 existed. There was Electronic Gaming Monthly and EGM2. And there were two separate, completely different magazines about video games from the same people that came out (laughs) in the same month. Why? I don't know. They just had... They had more stuff to talk about. So, I thought with EGM2, it was more so about, like, the tips and tricks and strategies. There was more of that, Uh, but there was definitely still, like, articles that were, like, would have been fine and not out of place in the regular magazine. It just felt like they just had... They could... They could do two magazines on this uh, and had enough material to talk about. And granted, E3 in the 97, 98 period had a month's worth of content to talk about. So it seemed like, just flipping through this magazine, like 85% of it is just reviews. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot and of reviews, a lot of really interesting video game ads. Yeah. yeah so lots of cool ads. I think all of it emerged from, so I, I just did a quick search to figure out what the first video game magazine was. Mm-hmm. Um, and it looks like it was one called Play Meter, which was kind of like a, a periodical for people who owned arcades. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think, like, I bet a lot of it spun out of that, mm-hmm. which is just like, hey, what game should I have in my arcade mm-hmm. so that the cool kids drop all their coins? Um, There's a couple of people who got really big in Nintendo by creating their own, like, little, like, uh, zines that yeah. went around, too. And those got really popular. Actually, I believe the creator of, like, Sim City started out as a zine maker. Yeah. So huh. I forget his name. Well, because like Will Will Wright. Will Wright, I, yeah. I feel like for years it was just ads and reviews. Yeah. And then there was like that period in the 90s where you had like rock star game devs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and that was like the intent to or uh, the attempt to try and make game devs into celebrities or or like to take like a fashion, a pr- fashion magazine approach. Yeah. To it. 
Yeah, that definitely did happen. I, I don't know. Thankfully like that went away. <laughs> so we're kind of bringing back a little bit of this at work right now. Yep. Um, we just started a newsletter that we are releasing, uh, mm. I guess, like quarterly. Yeah. It looks like it's two months worth. Yeah, it's going to be quarterly. Um, And they're just a free little thing that we're putting in with every order. Um, And it's real simple. And yeah, and I, think, I think most of the writing is done by our new hire, Jeremy Parrish, who used to be an EOC of US Gamer. Okay. So, which was another mm-hmm. online magazine. Should we provide them with a link? Now it feels like we've done this entire episode as an ad. It does. <laughs> <right now. laughs> well, no. that's what you get when you talk about video game magazines. Yeah. <laughs> and we work with video games. Mm-hmm. Like two of us work at a video game company. I'm wearing the shirt. So <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. Spoilers. So keep your eyes open. Yeah, yeah. You'll see it soon. Or sleep with one eye open. <laughs> Clutching your pillow tightly. I don't even know how to follow that up with anything. Under the sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That went a different route. Can we just all sing? No. That? Bye. No. Bye. 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 <laughs> <sighs> <sighs>